probably already heard about it. AI is taking over the world, closing entire industries. How AI puts your job at risk. And finally, how to make money using AI. It's all over YouTube now. If you're not already making $62,000 per month or trading stocks online with an 88% win rate using ChatGPT, what are you even doing? Get rich using ChatGPT. Adapt or die. Or maybe we know that AI really became mainstream since all the YouTube hustle bros are throwing themselves at it exactly like they did NFTs last year. You can't get rich using ChatGPT. I'm sorry, but it's just not that easy. AI isn't gonna steal your job, but a person using AI might. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'll show you five ways you can use AI to become more productive. How it helps us innovate and how it helps us generate more revenue for our business. No ghostwriting, stock trading, Udemy courses or any stupid shit like that. Five ways AI actually massively helps us improve our business. Let's get started. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Simon Harburg. I'm a startup CEO and founder, and I'm super excited about SaaS tech and making money on the internet. And there's nothing I enjoy more than increasing my output and making myself more productive. And as it turns out, AI does an amazing job at this. Let's start with the tool everyone is talking about, ChatGPT. It's only been live for a few months and it's been quite a bumpy ride. The creators, OpenAI, had to put a ton of limitations in place since people would ask it how to create explosives, how to hack banking websites, how to write SQL injections and other exploits. Today, it's been dumbed down quite a lot and it generally performs worse on creative tasks and long form writing. Though, there are still things it does very well. One of them is idea generation. I use ChatGPT to get me started. Instead of relying on ChatGPT to write entire scripts or articles, I use it to create an outline. I could tell it to write the outline of a YouTube video about pricing psychology and it would come up with ideas for topics I should cover. Or I could use it to outline the structure of a blog post. Or a newsletter. Or an ad. It does this really well and it's a great way to kickstart your flow of writing. Another obvious way to use this is for YouTube title generation. I do this a lot and it works very well with ChatGPT. I can give it a pretty clear description and constraints and it follows my directions very accurately. For a typical YouTube video, I end up generating 10 to 20 variations of titles and then I pick my top favorite ones. This also gives me a few options to split test between. Sometimes the video just doesn't pick up quite as I had hoped and sometimes changing the title makes the video more clickable. There are a ton of other ways you can use ChatGPT to generate ideas and create outlines. The essence here is that we don't want ChatGPT to actually write for us. The output just isn't really good enough. Instead, we wanted to get us started and suggest the writing path we can go down. Though, what if there's a way we could somehow use AI to actually write the content for us? Turns out, we can. And it's one of the things I use AI for all the time. Script writing. It just requires a little more technical knowledge, but honestly, you can easily do this without being a programmer or a data scientist. So here's how it works. OpenAI, the same company that runs ChatGPT, they also have a platform where you get much more fine-grained control over their AI models. You have an editor where you can trigger an output just like ChatGPT, but here you can choose which model you want to use and there are a lot more controls here that you can tweak to make the AI behave in a certain way. And here's the best part, OpenAI allows you to fine tune their models. This gives you completely new levels of control over the output that the AI produces. Let's just break this down. OpenAI offers you a lot of base models. For instance, the Text Da Vinci 3 model, which is used for ChatGPT. But you can teach these models how to become even more specialized in very specific things by showing them a lot of examples of inputs and the resulting outputs that you want. This is known as fine tuning and it creates an entirely new model, which now has some new, very custom capabilities on top of everything that the base model is already able to do. And this is a complete game changer. Do you think I wrote what I'm saying right now? I didn't. AI did. I actually only made a few small modifications before putting this very script on my teleprompter right in front of me. But how come it still sounds so much like me? 
It's because I'm using a fine-tuned model. I went through hundreds of my own YouTube scripts and cherry-picked individual pieces and used them as an output. After a few hours, I had a long list of input-output pairs that I could use to fine-tune the DaVinci 3 model. OpenAI has excellent documentation describing exactly how to do this, and they have a CLI tool that you can use to prepare the data so it follows the right format. Then I simply run a command, which uploads all the data to OpenAI's platform, and they use this data to train a custom model for me. After a while, this model appears in the OpenAI playground, and if I select it, I can now give it an input. And yes, you guessed it. It will generate a new output based on the description, but it will sound exactly like me. It will even follow the script writing conventions I use, including picking a scene, adding suggestions for B-roll, and everything else my script normally contains. This does take a bit of time to set up, and if you're not a programmer, you need to carefully read OpenAI's documentation to understand how the fine-tuning process works. But seriously, this is a massive time saver, and it's something you can't do directly with ChatGPT at this point. The only downside is that it costs money. On OpenAI's platform, you need to pay for each output you generate. But don't worry, the prices are very acceptable. Writing an entire script cost me around 50 cents to a dollar. No big deal. I've put all the relevant links in the description below. You can get started right away. All right, let's talk about something related, creating content for social media. There's a chance you might have seen me on social media. I'm very active almost everywhere, at least on all major platforms. Obviously, sharing content at scale on five different platforms can get out of hand really quickly. So I'm using a social media management tool for this. It's called FeedHive, and it's using AI and automation to help you be present on multiple platforms and sharing content at scale. FeedHive is undeniably the best social media management solution you can find on the market right now. Okay, okay. If you don't know me, full transparency here. I'm the founder of FeedHive. This is one of the SaaS products my team and I built, but I do firmly believe it's one of the best. We put a lot of effort into making AI assist you in a lot of different ways. Though there's one way we're using AI, which I personally find super helpful when I create content. A lot of tools can do content writing using AI. Copy AI, pepper type, chat DPT, but they all have the same problem that I pointed out just before. The outputs become generic and mostly totally uninteresting. It rarely produces anything valuable for your audience. And just because you create content at scale doesn't mean you should just post whatever just to post. With FeedHive, we took a different approach. We trained a custom AI model on millions of well-performing posts from our own database. But we trained it to do classification instead of trying to simulate the writing of these posts. This means that our AI is really good at predicting how well your content is going to perform. So in FeedHive, you write your post yourself, then you click a button. Now FeedHive will basically give you a score indicating how well it thinks your post is going to perform. And often enough, you'll get a bad score. Then we ask FeedHive to describe what's wrong with the post. And it will take your content, the one you wrote, and suggest changes to make it better. In this way, we still encourage you to write your own content, but FeedHive is gonna polish it, adding a few final changes to it that will make it much more likely to catch the attention of your audience and potentially go viral. No other social media tools are doing this right now. I'm using this on almost all my content and some of my best viral hits in the past few months were all posts that FeedHive helped me modify and rewrite. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below and Obviously, I'm super biased here, but you really should check it out. Okay, okay. Before we go on, let me just show you something funny and kind of bizarre at the same time. Did you notice anything weird about the thumbnail of this video? What if I told you that this is where the thumbnail started? I know, this is stupid. Nonetheless, yes. If right now you're thinking, is this thumbnail generated by AI? Then you're right. It's more or less entirely generated by AI, yes. Let me present Stable Diffusion. It's a text-to-image diffusion model capable of generating photorealistic images given a text input. It's absolutely incredible what this technology is able to do. One thing is its ability to create mind-blowing and completely photorealistic images, in a lot of cases indistinguishable from reality. But it gets even crazier. 
You can fine tune the stable diffusion model on your own images, just like we saw with GPT-3 and text-based outputs. So I now use AI to generate the images of myself for my YouTube thumbnails. I'm totally serious. Here's how I did this. I cleaned up a lot of old thumbnails and included just myself and an abstract background. So no text or objects. I then set up a Google Colab and found a template that was pre-made to train a stable diffusion model. This is all in Python, a language I don't know and hands down I don't understand a single line of this code. But it also shows that you don't really need to be a programmer to make this work. I click the green play buttons for each of these code sections one by one and follow the instructions that are given. Upload the images and start training. After an hour or so, I can now give Stable Diffusion a text input and describe how I should look and which pose I should have. And there we go. And as you can see, this looks kind of weird and very bizarre, but with a bit of tweaking and retraining, we can actually get it to produce something very realistic looking. I found that eyes are mostly a bit of a struggle. It's hard to get them perfectly round and have both eyes look in the same direction. So typically we do need a little bit of cleanup. Photoshop is really helpful here. I went through all the images that I used for training and created brushes for my eyes. So now I have happy eyes, surprised eyes, scared eyes and so on. So in order to clean up the AI generated model, we just need to find a brush that fits and there we go. Then a quick bit of retouch adding the rest of the elements and some text and boom, thumbnail. Fair enough, I can't fully generate a YouTube thumbnail on its own, but still, in this way, I don't have to put up a camera, lights, take a bunch of pictures, clean them up and all of that. Instead, I can create a finished thumbnail in less than an hour, only using my computer. It's a massive time saver and it's not that hard at all. I'll leave a link in the description below that shows a step-by-step -step guide on how to train a stable diffusion model on your images using Google Colab. And if you're patient, you can do this 100% free of charge. Otherwise, a $10 a month Google Colab will speed things up a lot. Finally, an area where I'm using AI extensively is writing software. In my company, we run multiple SaaS products. This is the main way we're making money. We're using a lot of no code in our setups, both for the actual products and behind the scenes to run various automation tasks. But we still rely on custom code and software engineering for a lot of the things we do. And AI is tremendously helpful here. I'm using two AI tools for this. ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot. Let me just make it clear, none of these will write entire applications for you. You do need to be a software developer, or at least know how to code some in order to take fully advantage of them. I've been using GitHub Copilot for more than a year now. It's incredible. It finishes my sentences, it's able to suggest entire code sections in the same style as the rest of the code base, and you can give it small instructions and it will almost flawlessly write these bits of codes for you that's just tedious and annoying to spend mental energy on yourself. I rarely have to look up documentation anymore. It already knows how mostly all public APIs are implemented, the names of the methods and the arguments they take. I'm saving an incredible amount of time using GitHub Copilot when I code. ChatGPT is an entirely different level. I can explain a problem and ask it to come up with an entire solution using implementations that I wasn't even aware of. It will deliver the code and carefully explain what it does and why it's implemented the way it is. It typically won't ace it on the first try, but often it's because the initial information you gave is incomplete. And here's where ChatGPT becomes mind-blowing. You simply ask it to modify it, letting it know about the new edge cases you wanted to cover and explain how it's not producing the result you wanted. Each time you refine it and give it new information, it revises the solution. And after a little back and forth like this, you have a perfect novel solution to your problem. Sometimes I even suggest possible solutions to solve some of the edge cases based on the initial solution it provided. And it totally takes the ball and dribbles on with it. It really feels like an actual pair programming session and it's both faster and way more productive than searching around on Stack Overflow for the whole day until you patch things together based on multiple different replies. I don't think it would be entirely fair to say that we're making money using AI. We certainly aren't getting rich using AI. We're making money running our SaaS businesses, selling info products and running this YouTube channel. And it requires a lot of work and effort. But it is fair to say that we're using AI to enhance our workflow and drastically increase the output of our business. And in that way, AI, in combination with us, humans, myself and my team, helps us make money online. If you got value from this video, you should really take a look at this one next. 
Here I'll give you five AI SaaS ideas that you can build in 2023. Also, remember to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I will see you soon for another video.